All right, hello and welcome back to our little coffee club, friends. <laughs> I just recorded this kind of clip twice in a row. If you saw last week's video, you know what, uh, what I'm talking about. But anyway, welcome back. Uh, today is the grinder comparison. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, not make a fool of myself again doing this as I did a few videos back. You'll see it here on the channel if you look for it. But it was a total fail trying to compare the grinders. Now, the main purpose of me doing this uh, comparison is to see if an average consumer, somebody like myself, just an average person, if you could taste, if you could taste any difference whatsoever just because you ground the coffee in, in a different grinder. So I have three grinders, okay? I have the onesie presso or easy presso K plus model. Uh, it's a very high end uh, hand grinder. You gotta do the grinding yourself, but it's a very good grinder. Then I have the niche. The niche is, I would say, uh, <laughs> a few years back, it was the top of the line. Now there's a lot of choices. It's still a prosumer level grinder, okay? It's still an end game grinder for most espresso enthusiasts out there, okay? If you're a coffee hobbyist and you're into the hobby and you wanna get some great shots of espresso, still the niche zero is top notch. But in the last few years, a lot more higher end conical grinders, flat bird grinders, a lot more stuff has hit the market and now maybe the niche for some people is like middle of the road or like an entry level to the prosumer level. Okay, let's say. <laughs> okay, then I have the Breville Smart Grinder Pro, which was my very first grinder. Uh, the Breville Smart Grinder Pro pairs perfectly with my machine, the Breville Infuser. It, they look good together on the counter. It makes a uh, good espresso. But it's a few other little things. <laughs> if you've seen my previous videos on the Breville Smart Grinder Pro, you'll see what, you know, the downsides of it. And today we might again run into some of those downsides of it. Like right now, I've been, I spent the last couple of weeks uh, dialing in, cause you know, I've been playing with a lot of coffees lately. Okay, <laughs> so this is just one of the, one of the things I've been working on. So. I have been playing around with the three grinders and dialing in the same coffee for all three grinders because the very first time that I tried to do this comparison, dialing in took so long that one of the coffees got like super cold and I could not compare them. So hopefully today we'll get a little bit better results. They should be dialed in or somewhat close to being dialed in to where I'll get somewhere between I wanna say somewhere between 35 and 45 seconds on all three grinders and the shots should be very similar. And then I'll try to see if there's you know any difference in the actual taste. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and try to get this thing done. Hopefully I won't have to brew more than once or maybe twice on these grinders to get it just right. Uh, the main gripe, and again, it's, it's Part of the reason why I'm telling you guys that the Breville Smart Grinder is the one that is uh, the weak link here, in other, in other words. <laughs> yes, it'll get you doing espresso. It's fine enough. I've had it for years. It's been, up until recent, it was bulletproof. I hadn't had any problems. It doesn't like to grind uh, light espresso beans, okay? On a light roast, it struggles. These beans are way more dense and harder to grind than something that's been um, roasted longer, like a medium or a dark roast, very easy to, um, a lot easier to grind. A light roast is difficult to grind, so it struggles, it shakes around. It's also not as consistent, and that's the problem today. I left it to where it was dialed in, but again, I set it to, if you guys saw the, the last video, at 13, it was too fine. At 14, it was too coarse. So you cannot be in the middle. So what I did is uh, played around with the setting up until like going real slow from 13 to 14. And as soon as it clicks over to 14, I left it there, okay? The very first time I ground with it, it by itself, I saw it go from 14 down to 13. And I have, if you guys remember a few videos back, I noticed that, bef you know, I hadn't noticed a whole bunch of that before in the past but I'm sure it's something that happens with this uh, 
a grinder that if it's in between numbers, it'll sometimes it'll bounce back to what you had it on or it'll bounce forward. So right now, I think when I turn it on, it's gonna say 13, it might say 14. Either way, okay, I'm gonna up those a little bit because in order for me to get the right brew time, I would need to be somewhere in between 13 and 14 and there's no way to do that. So I'm gonna dose at 18, 0.2 grams just for that grinder. The other ones will be at 18. That one will be a little up dose to 18.2. Hopefully it gives me a little more resistance on that puck and I get the right brew time. So with a little luck, we can compare these grinders today and see if an average consumer can taste any difference just because you used a different grinder. I doubt it. I always said I doubt it. I'm saying like an average guy like me. There's experts out there, they'll get five different coffees and they'll tell you what grinder uh, ground each one of them, okay? I'm not one of those people, <laughs> I'm just some dude, okay? So let's go ahead and get this thing going and hopefully with a little luck, I'll be able to taste these things to where they're somewhat similar and I'll tell you if the differences are obvious or not. Let's, let's go and, uh, and grind some coffee. All right, I'm going to start with the K plus and I'm gonna grind at 36 clicks. So we are just past the three and a half. That's 36 clicks. Let's dose out the 18 grams. Again, I'm using this coffee. I mean, if you've been watching the channel long enough, then you'll know, but I use this coffee because I'm very familiar with it. And uh, it's darn good coffee in my opinion. So uh, let's go ahead, dose out 18 grams. All right, that's 18 grams on the dot. Okay, so we have, we have our 18 grams. Get it into the K plus and grind it. Now, here's the only downside to this grinder. You have to do the grinding. <laughs> okay. It's a little bit of work. It takes about 30 seconds. Even for espresso, it's only about 30 seconds. All right, I just noticed a bean fell out right here, so let's get this one. Okay, that all went through. Let's do some puck prep. Well, I can only hope that we don't have to do more than a couple shots of each, or maybe we get lucky, we only have to do one. <laughs> oh man, I don't feel confident at all, I gotta say. <laughs> I really don't. Okay, so far so good. Now you guys are gonna see me checking retention on the other two grinders because they retain some coffee sometimes. Sometimes you might get uh, like a 0 0.2, 0 0.3 plus or minus. So I always check the retention. Now on this, well, I doubt it you'll get more than 0.1 or usually nothing at all. So it's not even worth checking. I've checked a bunch of times and it's just not worth your time. All right, this is a WDT tool. We use it to kind of distribute and declump, make sure everything's nice and fluffy and even in there. Okay. And this one is a distribution and tamper. I, I've talked about this too a bunch of times. I'm not sure if it does anything, but. I'm not gonna get into all of those details today because this video will get too long. But if you wanna see me talking about all these tools, check out some of the other videos. All right, I got somewhat a little bit of resistance. You gotta finish tamping with one of these unless the resistance is just right and you'll be able to tell with some practice and some experience. Okay, went down a little more, not a lot. I think we should be in the ballpark. I think we'll be in the ballpark, let's see. Let's lock it in. Let me bring you guys in a little bit closer. 
All right, I have my scale all set up. Today I'm gonna be um, brewing into these cups because it's the only one that I have three, uh, actually I have four of these. So I want them all to be equal, so I'll just brew into these. Let's do a five or six second pre-infusion and hopefully we'll get like a 40 second shot. If all works well, the scale should uh, weigh and time the shot for you all automatically. Okay, I always do a one to three ratio. That means I go 18 grams of ground coffee and I try to stop it right around 54. Well, this one went over to 55 in 37 seconds. So I'm gonna write that down to see how close I could get the other ones. So 37 seconds, 55.2 grams. Okay, so I have my 18 grams already on here for the niche. I'm supposed to grind it at 14.8, so just below the 15. Now the niche is a stepless grinder, so the adjustments that you can make are very tiny. You can adjust it just as little or as much as you like to dial in the perfect shot every time. Now before I do that, I'm gonna taste the very first shot that we got from the K Plus. Just wanna give it a quick taste test. Yeah, very familiar, delicious. This coffee has very good acidity. It's one of the things that I really love about it. Mm. It's nice and thick, beautiful shot. Although I stopped it a little late, we had 55 grams. So, all right, let's grind, um, let's grind on the niche. Let me show you guys. All right, so that's focus right there. We have 18 grams and on the niche, we are gonna look for uh, retention. Oh, I forgot. Man, I always do this. <laughs> Hold on. I always forget as soon as I start thinking about the retention, <laughs> I forget I have to weigh it into this little cup because this is the catch cup for the niche. So let's tear this out. Okay, it's at zero. It should be at 18. Okay, we're right at 18. Let me show you guys and then let's grind it. All right, so there you see it, it's right on 18. Let's grind it and see what we get out. The niche is very low retention. Uh, last time I had a 0.3, which is like the most I've ever gotten on this. Usually it's, you know, spot on, or you might have like 0.1, maybe 0.2. So 0.3 is very unusual. As a matter of fact, it's only happened once. Very easy to use grinder. I absolutely love it. One of the things I like about it, as you could hear, the pitch of the grinding is just, to me, is so much more pleasant than most grinders out there. Most grinders out there, the grinding noise is so screechy and just, it, I hate it. And this grinder is, is like a deep growl. I always turn it off and on a couple times just to make sure everything went through. Let's check the retention. Okay, there you see it guys, 18.2. We got a little bit out from last time. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and, and rectify that with a spoon and get it right on 18. But we did get a little bit, uh, maybe there was a bean stuck in there, a little bit of something. Okay, so that right there is what we commonly call exchange. Okay, you got a little bit of coffee from the previous time you ground some coffee on it, you got a little bit out this time. Okay, we're right at 18. Again, I'm just trying to be like extremely careful, but seriously, that makes no difference. A point two, point three, it's not gonna make any difference. Let's do some pot prep. Again, some WDT. Get it all nice and even, tap it down. If it doesn't go far enough down, 
if you remove the dosing funnel you'll get a little spillage so you could always like push it down a little bit with a, a tamper just go around a little bit push it down a little okay again we distribute although that might may or may not do anything <laughs> Then we tamp, I always start tamping with this one just because it's more accurate. Okay, I did feel about the right resistance, but I think it'll go down a little bit more with this one. You wanna keep the pressure the same every time. Very important to keep it nice and flat. It should be nice and flat and level. At the end, if you're using nice fresh coffee, you should be able to turn it upside down, okay? And nothing comes out. That means it's hard enough. Just keep it always consistent. Keep it the same so that then you can adjust everything else with just the grind size, okay? If the pressure you're using is the same, the dose amount is the same, everything's the same, then the only other factor is your grind size, and that's how you control how fast it's gonna brew. So let's go ahead and see what we get with the niche. Okay, so let's try to brew from the niche. Start the scale. You get the espresso mode. The A is the automatic function. It starts flashing. Then you can put your cup on there. It should tear automatically. And when you get the A flashing again, now you can start brewing and it should weigh and time your shot at the same time. Again, a one to three ratio. Give it about five, six second pre-infusion. Let go of the button. And hopefully we'll get our 54 grams in around 40 seconds. The first one I think was 37. I wrote it down. Again, I think it's gonna be unavoidable as far as the temperature from the three shots. There's just no way for me to do this fast enough. I'm sure there's people out there that are skilled enough to do it. <laughs> I'm not one of them, but I'll do my best. Okay, I'm gonna try to stop it a little earlier this time, maybe around 52. We're getting there. Also, this one brewed longer. Okay, let's see where it stops. We got, okay, 52.3 grams in 51 seconds. So this one was much longer. Let me get the scale out of the way. I'm gonna give it a quick taste test and, and tell you how it tastes. Let's see. <laughs> You're not gonna believe this, you know. I said that you know, I don't think that I was gonna taste any difference, but right away, right off the bat, <laughs> I think I do. Oh man, it's it, it's a, a difference. Yes, there is. <laughs> now, how can we be sure that it wasn't just the way it happened to brew, right? How we how do how do we know that this time we have more channeling or less channeling? How do we know last time we have more or less channeling? I mean, how do we know? Okay, there's always gonna be channeling. It's unavoidable to have some channeling. It's always gonna happen. The water's gonna flow through the puck a little bit different every time. So how do we know, you know? Um, <laughs> wow, I didn't expect that. Let me, let me taste the other one. Here, here's the other one. But you know, as far as temperature, the other one, it's already, this one's colder. And again, this one brewed longer by quite a few seconds. This is just, I don't think I'll ever get this. 100%, what a fail. <laughs> oh, I have to say, I like the one from the niche better. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't expect to see any difference. Now, the temperature is already different. There's more, and you know, uh, I don't think, you know, I still say it's probably not even the grinder. It's probably just that they didn't brew at the same amount of time. There's a lot more acidity a bit too much on the first on the first shot the one from the k plus the niche is sweeter and it's also thicker it's just oh, it's so good <laughs> i didn't think i was gonna taste any difference but i think if i get it again like in 50 seconds on the k plus then they'll taste the same that's why I, I still you know I'm still, I'm still gonna say that let's see what happens with this one today but i have a feeling this is gonna be another total fail if it happens to be a total fail, I'm not gonna call this a grinder comparison. I'm just gonna call it pulling shots on the Brevo infuser. <laughs> You'll see that's gonna be the name of the thumbnail. I'm sorry, I did the best I could. Okay, so I'm gonna dose out my 18. Remember on the, on the Brevo Smart Grinder Pro, I'm gonna dose out 18.2. I wanna 
and up my dose a little bit to help me get a longer brewing time. Okay, 18.2. As far as flavor, that's not gonna make any difference, but as far as your brew time, it could help. Okay, so there you see it, 18.2. Uh, I told you guys that I had set this at 14. I don't know if the camera, yeah, you could see it there. You could see it says 13. I had set it at 14, and as soon as I ground the coffee, it, it while I was grinding, it clicked back down to 13. So it's right where, you know, it's right in between 13 and 14. This just is <laughs> as good as you could do with this one. All right, so we have a little bit more coffee to kind of help us get a longer uh, brew time. Here's another thing, I can grind faster with the hand grinder than this grinds the 18 grams. I'm gonna set it here at 20 seconds and I always have to do it twice because it takes like 40 seconds to grind this. Okay, so here we go. You can kind of hear how it's struggling, the poor thing. Okay, so it's done. Uh, again, you see how it struggles a little bit. And this is not even a really, really light roast. I mean, I gotta say that Dunkin' uh, Donuts coffee, it is fairly light. It's, uh, it's a medium, but a real true medium. And I would even say maybe even it's medium to light. So, on those types of coffees, the smart grinder is always going to struggle a bit. All right, let me smack it a little bit and see if there's any more coffee in there, and then we'll do some puck prep. Okay, as far as retention, we got 18.4. <laughs> we got a little bit extra. Again, exchange, guys. But that point two, believe me, not going to make no difference. In, in taste, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, you know, that's not gonna make any difference. Okay, I'm gonna leave it at 18.3. Hopefully that's gonna give us a, a, good, a good brew time. Let's do some pug prep. All right, here we go. Now on a positive note, I did need to have some coffee. I felt like having my afternoon brew right about now. So this, will, this will, should do it. I have three doubles. Okay, again with some WDT. Again, something that you notice is that, eh, not that it's very clumpy, but you do see a difference between what you get from the Breville Smart Grinder Pro and what you get from the K Plus and the Niche. A little bit different. It's, it's not quite as fluffy, the grinds. All right, tap it down. Distribute. Tamp. And finish with this one. Keep your pressure consistent always. Nice, level, and flat. Make sure it's packed in there like this, and you're good to go. All right, so I got you guys in close for another shot. Okay, here we go. See what time we get with this one. Okay. You can keep your pre-infusion five, six seconds. Go to full pressure. Let's see what we get with this. Okay, I did a good job with this one. 53 grams in 36 seconds. Uh, so, it's right in the middle of the other two. Okay, so let me get the scale out of the way and give it a quick taste test. Okay, 
Yeah, it's not as thick as it was, as the niche was. It was a lot creamier on the niche. But on flavor, it's closer to the niche as the other one. Again, I just think it's just because of the brew time. If you get these exactly at the same brew time, okay, I don't think you'll be able to taste any difference. Let's go ahead, sit down, set up the other camera and talk a little bit more. All right, so I'm gonna start by giving these coffees a stir. This is the one from the K Plus, the first one. This is the niche. And this one is the Breville Smart Grinder Pro. All right, so man, right now they're all at different temperature, you know, but let's, let's taste them. Let's see if I could give any final thoughts on this. This one has the most acidity. As a matter of fact, I think it's a little under extracted, at least for my taste. I like to get this coffee sweeter. Um, but as a straight shot, just having a straight shot, it's very nice. It's very nice. Definitely if I was going to mix it with milk, it's way too, um, way too bright, way too much acidity. And again, it's diluted a little bit more. This one was, I have it written down here. It was 55.3 uh, grams. So it's a little more liquidy, not as thick. <laughs> when I tasted the niche one, the very first time after this one, uh, it was just very noticeable, a lot thicker. Let me put on my glasses so I could read my little notes here. Okay, so the niche was uh, 52.3 grams in 51 seconds. So again, the extraction was a lot longer. Okay, so the K plus was only 37 seconds. The niche was 51. You know, that's a pretty big difference. And also the K plus is more diluted, 55.2 versus 52.3. So right there, I mean, I think the difference is that. I don't think you'll be able to, I don't <laughs> Man, I don't think you can taste the difference as far as just, you know, the fact that it's a different grinder, different burrs, or not, not your average guy. Yes, can, can the, you know, people that are, their life revolves around coffee and they're doing this all the time. Yes, I believe they can tell the difference, but a regular guy like me, I'm, I don't know. Yeah, right now they're totally different. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think it's the burrs or the grinder or any of that. I think it has to do with the extraction, the way that went down, the amount of liquid that came out and the brew time. You know, this one is thicker, it's sweeter. It's, it's just a better shot all around. The K Plus, I think, uh, again, I, I think I could do a lot better. I got it all wrong. All right, this one. This is uh, the Breville Smart Grinder. Now the Breville Smart Grinder and the Niche were very close. Okay, let's, let's see. Okay, let's see. The Niche was, was 52.3 grams and the Smart Grinder was 53. So that's really close. You can't get any closer. The Niche was 51 seconds and the smart grinder was only 36 so right there you know you're gonna notice that that is you're gonna notice that that's uh, quite a bit but let's see temperature wise they're both cold so it doesn't matter but this is a way better shot you have acidity but this one's under extracted this one's not this one is acidity but nice sweetness as well well balanced creamy delicious this one i got it wrong and i don't think it has anything to do with the grinder okay let's go with the breville smart grinder this is still a little bit warm mm -hmm. yeah it's a lot closer to this definitely this one's in a different different ballpark i got it all wrong Maybe next time I'll try just two grinders and see. <laughs> oh my God, I'm horrible at this. I'm sorry guys, I did the best I could. These two are very close. Mm. 
Yeah, this one. It's not as thick as the niche, although the amount of water was almost exactly the same. So the niche is still a thicker, nicer, creamier shot. No doubt. Flavor wise, they're almost identical. Identical. The texture and consistency of the shot, I gotta say, I like the niche a little bit better. Flavor wise, they're almost exactly the same. You know, this one is a little bit warmer. If they would be exactly the same temperature, maybe on a side by side comparison like this, where both shots are exactly the same, you got everything exactly right, maybe some person out there that is an average consumer with very good taste buds, <laughs> maybe can tell a little bit of a difference. Does that, you know, is that worth it to probably, like I always say, probably not, <laughs> you know, it's the other factors, okay? The ease of use, the consistency. I wanna be able to next time put my coffee in there and get the same results again. You're a lot more likely to be able to do that on the K plus and on the niche than on the Breville Smart Grinder. It just fluctuates a bit. As you can see, all three of them are capable of pulling a good shot. I've gotten great shots from the K plus. Just that today, for this coffee, it brewed a little bit too fast. That's, that's all that happened, okay? Uh, you know, I wonder if I have to, uh, you know, uh, grind it at maybe at three, like, wow, that's really fine. But I don't know, maybe the next time I'll pair the K plus versus I, I'm going to today, I'm just going to say by the slightest of margins, <laughs> the niche wins by the slightest of margins. The Breville Smart Grinder is in second. Next time, maybe I'll pair again, try again the Breville Smart Grinder and the K plus and try to get them to where they're closer as far as the extraction, the brew time and the, uh, the quantity that came out, try to get it closer. For today, these two are close enough. I mean, I, these two are close enough. And your average consumer, first of all, they wouldn't care. <laughs> Either one of these two shots, would, they would be fine with it. If they like espresso like this, just straight espresso, okay? Let's start by saying that. If you mix them with milk, you will not be able to tell any different, not even if you're an expert. I would, man, I would, <laughs> I don't know how we could challenge somebody out there, but there is no way that if you put milk and sugar and put these two shots that anyone is going to be able to tell any kind of difference whatsoever. There's just no way. Okay. As a straight shot, I don't doubt it. You know, there's people out there that are experts and they'll be able to say, yeah, you know, this is a better shot or whatever. You know, your average guy like myself, I, you know, I doubt it. I doubt it and on any of these three grinders. It's the other things. If you've seen a lot of my videos by now, you, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, it's the other things, the other factors. One more time, by now they're kind of both cold. So let, <laughs> let's see. Yeah. You know, you get, the, again, this is the, this is the smart grinder. So you get, I already pushed this one out of the way. <laughs> this is the smart grinder. And you know, you get the acidity, you get the sweetness of the coffee. It's very, this makes an interesting cup of coffee. Um, but the only thing is just, it's not as thick and gooey as the niche. Let, let, let me see, let me go head to head here. You know, some people like to have water in between. <laughs> it's not that, it's not that crucial. All right, let's go with this one. Just, wow, a tiny little bit sweeter. Yeah, a tiny little bit sweeter. And again, to me, a little bit nicer texture, a little bit thicker, a little bit creamier. It's 
and a tiny little bit sweeter. I could, I wouldn't be able to tell these two things apart. I can guarantee you that. If you give me a blind test and you give me these two things, there's, there's no way I could really say for sure, oh, this is the niche and this, no, <laughs> no, no. Okay, again, these two are very close to each other as far as, um, as far as the quantity that came out, that's almost almost the same. And as far as the brew time, you know, the smart grinder was 36 seconds and the niche was 51. That's kind of a big difference. And that's the reason why I have more sweetness, a little bit more sweetness on the niche. Um, well, guys, you know, we're just gonna have to leave it here. <laughs> we'll keep doing more fun comparisons as uh, as the days go by this video has already probably gone like super super long like all my other ones <laughs> please guys comment something below that's what keeps me making these the fact that you guys enjoy it you know you have me there keeping you company um and you listen to me chit chat for a little while maybe get a chuckle here and there for something i said i'm sure i got something here terribly wrong comment below let me know what can we do to improve this uh <laughs> this whole comparison I think I'm not gonna call this video any kind of comparison. It's just having some fun pulling shots here on the <laughs> Rebel Infuser or something because there's no way that this is accurate enough to get my point across. And I think that the bird geometry and all these things you hear people talking about, the birds, this and that, unless you're an expert, your average consumer, I, I don't think you can tell birds apart. You know, maybe if you're so used to like a certain type of grinder and you go to something totally different, maybe at that moment, maybe you can pick them out. You know, I, I don't know. I, again, I'm still a rookie at this, <laughs> although I've been doing it for a few years, but there's always some learning to be done. So anyway, guys, I'm glad I was able to keep you company for a little while here. I hope that you're brewing something tasty. Uh, please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>